Context engineering is the latest hype term in the AI coding space, but too many people overcomplicate it. Really, all it is is that you're bringing all the information to the AI model so it can solve any kind of problem for you. And in this video, I'll show you how your terminal is actually your best friend and your most powerful context engineering tool with three concrete examples. And in these examples, you will see how you don't need complex MCP servers or super difficult memory functions to just do most of your work. A lot of powerful utilities are already available in your terminal because so many developers over the past 20, 30, 40 years have built amazing tools that your AI model actually already has access to today. So let's get into it. To show this, we'll be editing this application together, which is a recipe cost calculator. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is actually adding a kilogram unit to the dropdown that you see here, because I'm able to specify the price per piece, per liter, per milliliter, per gram, but not per kilogram, even though that's very handy. So what we actually want to do is in this case, go to Copilot, but you can use any AI editor that you want. And I'm going to paste in this first prompt. Now, all the prompts I'll be using throughout this video will be in a comment down below, but for now, just watch along and enjoy the video. What we're gonna be doing here is adding support for kilogram as a unit option in the cost calculator. And I'm gonna explain the rest of this prompt while it runs. The idea behind this is that we're going to be changing some code right now and just letting the AI agent work on that. But changing code is only one step in a professional development workflow. Very often you have to change tests as well. Now, some vibe coders might be building apps without any tests whatsoever, but if you're gonna be in any professional context, you will need to be writing tests, especially if you're building an app that actually gets real users and you need to write tests for very important methods that will be used to, for example, process payments. You want to have tests for those, right? But it is such a pain to write all of these tests and keep them up to date manually especially as people use AI tools for writing the code itself. You could ask in the same prompt for the AI model to create the tests next to the code, but I have a much more effective method that I'm using in my daily work right now. So let's actually wait until it's done with this kilogram implementation, and I will show you how you can create very reliable tests from this code. So the kilogram unit has been added. Let's just quickly validate that. In the application, I'm gonna go ahead and select kilograms. Then I'm gonna say that I have flour, I have one kilogram, and then let's say the price per gram is, I don't know, this much, because obviously flour is not that expensive. And then you can see that it indeed correctly calculates this times 1000, because we of course have a thousand grams in a kilogram, and then we end up getting $3 for this flour. Pretty expensive, but not too bad. So what you can see now is that we have a functional kilogram unit. And you can actually see here that many different files were already changed for this rather simple implementation. In a bigger application, you might find that when you implement a feature, you don't just do it in one single chat, but you do it across many different chats and you might touch up to 30 files. When you ask the AI model to then create tests, you will see that the experience is quite unreliable, especially if you're working on bigger applications. So this is where my first terminal trick will come into play to ensure that the AI model has enough context to actually write tests for this feature. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new chat because again, usually you will be implementing features like this across multiple chats. And then I'm going to paste a prompt in here. In this prompt, I propose that the AI model should use the terminal command git diff to show all the changes that were made between this branch that I'm working on right now to add the kilogram support and the original code. Now you can see that it's actually going to be running git diff. And this is a terminal command that uses git, right? The version control system for software development. And I'm going to click continue because I, of course, wanted to actually run that. And you can see in my terminal, if I make it a little bit larger, that the actual value of this git diff command is that it outputs every single change that was made between, again, my main branch of the application and this new branch that I'm working on right now where I'm adding the kilogram feature. The great part is the AI model now has a complete idea of all of the code that was changed. And you can even let it run more git commands like git status so it can get an overview of all the specific files that were changed. Now, sometimes the AI model might look for this itself, but by using these git commands, you can guarantee that it has a full idea of all of the changes made so far. And that's the point of context engineering, right? You want to ensure that the AI model has enough information. And then it actually proceeds to check the existing test files, which are created before. For example, we actually have a calculation 
functions test file, and you can see the proof here that it has a good idea of all of the changes made by the AI chat that we had before. So even though we started a new chat, we made sure that this AI model has the full context of what is going on. And now you can see that it's consistently adding some good tests around this new kilogram units that we added before. Okay, so after a little while, you can actually see that it's created a bunch of new tests. If I keep scrolling, you can just see how many green bars there are because all of these tests are brand new. And it's created tests in both the calculations file as well as the formatting file. And this is really a good example of the AI model performing very well because it's focused on just doing one task. It just has to write the tests because I provided all the context. Now then, let's actually see if these tests actually run properly. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that command, npm test. Okay, so you can see here it's trying to run the tests multiple times. I think it's because it, for some reason, cannot run my terminal output. But the most important part is that we can see in my terminal now that actually these tests are running successfully, which is perfect. So this is the first example from the video and you can just see how well this works because I provided all the context before the AI model actually got started on the work. So let's move on to the second example. In this next example, we're going to improve the quality of our code base. The prompt that I'm going to paste here instructs the AI model to analyze the code base to identify functions that appear to be heavily used or potentially overused. Now, the way that a lot of people approach these kinds of improvements to your code base is that they let the AI agent read many, many different files. The problem with that is eventually it will become super slow and you're going to hit context limits of these AI models. Instead, what you should instruct the AI model to do is just read a couple of files to see if it can spot anything that looks very suspicious. So for example, if we scroll down here, you can see that it identifies a couple of functions that it thinks might be overused, like the format currency method here. And then instead of it trying to actually find that function throughout all of the files by literally opening every file and reading it, you can just make use of a lot of terminal commands, in this case RG, to find all of the files where format currency is present. And this will be super snappy and quick compared to letting the AI model read everything iteratively. I'm going to prove that right now by clicking on continue. Now, as I run all of these commands, you can see that it now gets a good idea of where these functions actually appear across the entire repository. For example, you can now see that it's trying to find specific occurrences of the format currency method to see if it's overused in certain files. So now it's going to do the same for the method round money. And you can indeed see that it's actually finding the code file together with every single reference of round money. And it is doing this very quickly because it's using a terminal command instead of manually opening all the files and reading it. So this is a great way to use your terminal to find ways to improve the code base. Now what you see is that it's actually removing these excessive function calls that I put there on purpose, but I didn't specifically say that these function calls were in the page TypeScript file. It found that on its own by using those terminal commands. Another example of a proactive refactor that it's doing is it's creating this memorization file, which is used to cache a bunch of computational results that have been done in the past. So you can imagine that as recipes get more complex and ingredients get reused, a feature like this can be used to then just pull out the calculation results from memory. Now, to be honest, the calculations I'm performing in this demonstration app are very simple. It's just calculating the cost of one kilogram of rice, for example. But you can see how something like this can be super useful in a bigger application. Application. So I hope that the second example showed you how you can make sure that the AI agents actually proactively improve your code base by using the terminal. Now let's move on to our final example where the AI agent will interact with the database directly. Now my last example might be the most powerful one because there are a lot of people claim that you should use MCP servers to plug your AI systems into, for example, the database that you're using as a developer. And these MCP servers can definitely work, but they can be difficult to set up and not every database has an MCP server that's reliable. The thing is, though, if you're using standard databases, like in this case, SQLite or PostgreSQL, all of those databases already have a very robust terminal tool that you can call. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to paste the following prompt. And in this prompt, the AI model actually has to use the SQLite 3 terminal commands to identify which recipes would be affected if we change the price of flour. Because you can actually input this as a user, but we keep track of the price in the database as well. Now, in this case, what it's going to do is first check out the schema of the database. And it's able to do that because SQLite 3 already has a terminal tool that we have installed. And you can now see here that all of the creation commands are visible to the AI model. 
and it can actually continue to explore the database from here. Now it seems to get into a little bit of a loop. It wants to check out the schema again. Mm, that's totally fine. It can happen. Uh, but now we can actually see that it's proceeding. It's going to do a very specific read query inside of my database to check if flower exists in the ingredients table. So let's click continue and then see what happens. And you can indeed see that we do have an entry in here for a specific flower price. So every kilogram costs, I guess this is in dollars, $2.49. Now what we can actually do is find all recipes that contain flour as an ingredient. And this is a pretty hefty select query, but it's actually accurate because it read those tables before. So it knows this query is actually good. We're gonna go ahead and click continue. And now you can see that it indeed finds a bunch of recipes like chocolate chip cookies, cinnamon rolls, etc. And you can really see how powerful this is, right? I mean, look at how big this SQL query is. It all made that up just by reading the schema's table, and we don't need any MCP server for this. We're just using the terminal tool that has been developed by the SQLite team many, many years ago, and it's super stable and reliable. So it's now going to do a bunch of estimations for how the prices for these recipes would change if the price of flour were to be changed in the database. So now you can see that it's created a nice form of the table. You can, for example, see that cinnamon rolls have a current total cost of $4.44, with a current flower cost of $1.20. But with the new flower cost, that's for example, $1.68, you will actually have a flower cost increase. But then we of course need to know what the final increased price is of this recipe. After going back and forth with the model a couple of times, you will see that it actually creates a final table, which contains the information about the flower use in all of these different recipes and the current cost together with what the cost would be if the price of flour were to increase by 40% or 80%. Now, of course, all of this is pretty much dummy data. The point is really to show you that it's interacting with the database in a very clever way. Now, of course, a lot of this is dummy data, but the point here is that the AI model is interacting with my database directly without using a complex MCP server at all. It's just using terminal tools that it can read out. The great part about this is that you can use this in so many different use cases. So I'm done with showing you examples for today. I hope that this inspires you to give all of this a shot for yourself and become a real context engineer. Now I have way more content on AI coding and building real AI systems that can help you along your career. And you should definitely check out the AI engineering community that's in the link in the description below if you made it this far. I hope to see you there.